All right, another wonderful day that the Lord has made, and we uh, continue with uh, our devotions in the year of the Bible. Uh, today is May 1st, and we are looking at First Chronicles chapters 3 through 5. We started with chapters 1 and 2 yesterday, and up through chapter 9, we've got a lot of genealogies again, as the writer wants to uh, connect uh, the world and its uh, folks to uh, the chosen people of Israel, and then also wants to uh, get all the descendants uh, of Israel in order to connect it, connect everything ultimately to the uh, hopefully a restored monarchy after exile and presenting the monarchy, uh, the ideal of the monarchy uh, with King David and, and uh, the uh, good kings of Israel, and then also uh, concerned about the temple, restoring the temple. So um, <clears throat> we get into chapter three, and uh, we get the descendants of David. This is really important for the chronicler. Uh, the the uh, David's descendants is centered uh, in... Uh, which is the center of Judah's genealogy. That's what the writer wants to do. Um, and he does distinguish between the uh, ex exilic generation and the post-exilic exilic generation of David's ancestors. Um, and he wants to do this because this is important because uh, we need to know David's line, David's ancestors, even now that we've come back from exile because hopefully a king will come from David's uh, line and uh, rule Israel in righteousness and justice. So that's important. Now you get into chapter four and you get other descendants of Judah. Um, and of course, the best known of the descendants, at least today for us, is Jabez. So in, back 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, the prayer of Jabez was a little book that was popular. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to cast too many aspersions on the book, but it really misunderstood the, the text. What's going on here is that uh, when Jabez asked uh, to enlarge his borders, there's some sarcasm here because Jabez, it's, uh, it's uh, Jabez's uh, inability to satisfy his own desires and his own wants and his own hungers. And uh, <clears throat> so... When, when Jabez asked God to enlarge his borders so that he basically so that he can have more land and more food, there's a um, uh, sort of uh, wordplay going on here between enlarging Jacob's borders of his land, Jabez, Jabez's borders of his land because his girth is uh, in getting larger and larger. So it's just kind of interesting how uh, a very small a verse of scripture, just one little verse of scripture gets uh, uh, turned into uh, a popular book. So it's just kind of interesting to just ponder that for a little bit. Um, and um, I guess I guess it could be said positively of Jabez, however, that he wants uh, his the borders of his land to be enlarged uh, due to prayer and not due to military force. So there's that to be said. Uh, you get also in chapter four, the descendants of the tribe of Simeon, um, and then you get the tribes of Transjordan in verse, in chapter, starting in chapter five, uh, Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. One of the things that's important here to recognize is that for the chronicler, it isn't just the genealogy, the line, the descendants that matter. It's also the geography, that there's something to be said, something important about the geography of each tribe. Geography makes a difference. Geography makes a difference as to whether peoples will prosper or not, uh, as to whether uh, there will be, um, you know, uh, you just think of where Israel is located. One of the reasons in Israel's history uh, that they're, they struggle so much with uh, a foreign invasion and going up against foreign adversaries is because when you look at uh, the geography of the empires of the time, Egypt and then Assyria and then Babylon, they all surround Israel. So when these empires go to war against each other, where are they going to meet? They're going to meet in this little place called Israel. So Israel is always going to be 
uh, they're going to be like at the center of the nutcracker, right? All the pressure will will uh, come upon them. So geography does make a difference uh, for how um, uh, nations fare and don't fare and do not fare and, and what kinds of, you know, trade they have and uh, uh, what kinds of industries they develop. This makes a difference. So, so the writer does uh, want to emphasize the geography of the tribes uh, as well. So um, uh, you also have the chronicler wanting to remind, even though the chronicler is going to present the kingship in idealistic fashion, because that's what he hopes happens, he doesn't ignore, the chronicler doesn't ignore the idolatry. And we certainly get that in chapter five. Uh, and, and the chronicler wants to uh, mention that the reason for the exile of the northern tribes is their uh, idolatry and for their failure to keep the covenant and uh, that this is the punishment uh, for their sin. Um, another one other point to make here is you get into the beginning of five and uh, uh, the uh, writer wants to uh, clarify the reason uh, by which uh, Reuben, who is Jacob's firstborn, is not the one who comes first in the genealogy. So one of the things we are here now reminded of again is how God seems to do his work, do his, uh, does his choosing, not through the expected firstborn, but through uh, sons who are not firstborn. So whether that's Jacob as opposed to Esau, um, and whether it's uh, Ishmael at first, uh, as opposed um, uh, to Isaac. Uh, so it, it's just important to know that uh, God uh, does not necessarily do his work, his specific work of redemption from through Israel toward the world through the firstborn, which, would, would, which, which is what would be expected in the culture. God doesn't do that because God uh, wants us to remember that that this drama of salvation that unfolds is God's work. We get to participate in it, we get to cooperate with it, but it's God's work. And so the chronicler reminds us why Reuben is not, why we don't say today the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Reuben, um, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Reuben, that uh, it's not Reuben. So anyway, all right. Um, so that's about all we got for today. Uh, we will continue uh, tomorrow with chapter six, just one chapter. It's a longer chapter, but we'll continue with the descendants, but we'll have some interesting other things, I think, in chapter six to mention as well. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, thank you again for the gift of this day. Um, and we pray that uh, in this day that we may be faithful, uh, that you might enlarge not our borders and our, and our uh, stuff that we accumulate, but that you would enlarge our witness, our witness for the gospel. And we lift our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, see you tomorrow.